Welcome to this Hello. Saturday's yeah. Traveling Young. We can't keep it together, you guys. We're doing our best. Today's Saturday, but one advantage to today is we can talk briefly about the World Cup, and oh, I'm going to, this is my Russia World Cup glass that I bought when we were in, well, you're the focus point, while we were in the last World Cup that we yeah. went to in Russia. And yeah, Denmark is going to be up against France. Sounds yeah. interesting. The U.S. is up against England, England. and uh, those may or may not remember, but England and the U.S. were in the same group during the uh, South Africa World Cup, and I remember we went to that, and we were at a match, and these English guys were next to us, and the U.S. won the group, and oh, yes. they assumed England was going to win the group, <laughs> and it was so funny because they were like, trying to get rid of their tickets that they bought yeah. for the, the winning group game, <laughs> round of 16, because they just... Of course, somebody yeah, from England would just assume the thought. U.S. would be in the in the, yeah. or I'm sorry that they would win the group and not the U.S. Yeah. So we ended up not going to the match and not buying tickets That's from right. them because I think that was in Rustin. I think is where that match was, but yeah, it was like super far away from where we were at the time. We were in Johannesburg, yeah, and it, it was a pretty long to. drive. So we I'm watched glad the we didn't go. <laughs> we watched the loss to Ghana in a in a oh. restaurant. Yeah. But anyway, so celebration of the World Cup draw that was today yep. because we're recording this on Friday. Can't wait for the World Cup, and we'll uh, we'll definitely have some World Cup content when we get closer to yes. that. Although we're not going this time. We've been yeah. to the last four World Cups, Germany, South Africa, Brazil, and Russia, yep. but we're not going to be going this time around. Yeah. So we'll be watching it from our home here in Denmark. Yeah. All right, so that has nothing to do with what we're going to talk about, which is our favorite museums... <laughs> In Denmark, yes. and we're gonna we're gonna talk about the top five. There's so many. I just have to say real fast, Denmark. I have been blown away at the quality. Oh my God, so many of museums. To go. And they're so good. The museums are yeah. top notch. All of, All of them are super good. Um, but we have some favorites, and we're gonna share. And why don't you start? So, I'm gonna drink. <laughs> by the way, a Christmas beer that I still have left over. Go ahead. Oh God, we have so many Christmas beers. Uh, so coming in at number five is Jose Anosintus, and this one just recently got redone. We just did a video for it uh, not too too long ago, and I have to say I really really loved, even though it wasn't even completely finished yet. I really loved uh, the Jose Anderson Museum in Odense. It's so creative. It's so immersive. You just go in and you feel like you're inside these, uh, these wonderful fairy tales that he wrote. And I think it's, they did a really, really good job of balancing the creativeness of his stories with his own story. Cause his own story is actually at times quite sad, you know, and so he had this kind of darker side of himself, but then he had all these, you know, wonderful fairy tales. And um, I, I think it's just a fabulous place to go. It's absolutely beautiful. They've got the beautiful garden outside and, and it's just really nice. I really liked it a lot. Yeah, it was nice. It wasn't, as she said, it wasn't done when we were there, yeah. but um, uh, we're going to go back and see. Oh, I guess it'll to. be done soon, yeah. but I do know there's a, a little mini music festival in Udense in, uh, in the fall. Yeah. So maybe we'll... Maybe we'll check it out then because uh, there's some people we like that will be there. But yes. if we don't go there before then, we shall see. <laughs> so I actually kind of put this list together. Um, she, I consulted her. <laughs> but, and there's a ton of great museums in Copenhagen. Yes. Uh, but one of my favorites is the National Museum. And what's so cool about that is it's really got the like the whole so much about the history of Denmark culturally, pop culture, and everything. I went there during the um, <clears throat> during the video that I did about the uh, artifacts and the objects on the Danish bills, and I got to get a tour from one of the kind of main historians and, and curators of the content who knows the most about the Stone Age and Bronze Age and all that stuff in Danish history. So I got. Something special, which I hope you've seen that video. But it's also just really neat. And we actually went back, uh, went there for the first time when we were here four years ago while we were in Denmark tracking down where we were going to live as we were kind of transitioning to live here. And it was just a, a miserable day outside. Perfect day to spend inside a museum. And so we went inside the National Museum and spent like an afternoon there. And it was really, really nice. I mean, I, I remember... 
you know, they're one of the things I really liked, which may or may not normally be there, but they had this like a uh, photo booth thing. Oh um, yeah. And Maya and I did that when we were in Japan together and it was like the exact same. Yeah. I think you could even put costumes on and stuff. And, and you guys yeah. went and took uh, some photo yeah. booth pictures, you and Maya. Um, it's in a really cool spot in central Copenhagen, right next to the Christian Borg slot. And since recently as part of that last video I did about the, um, the objects, I learned that that is the old prince's palace which is super neat to be able to now realize that half the museum is really old historical part of, you know, Danish royalty and the other half is newly built and it's just a, just a really cool space. Um, so the National Museum is Co in Copenhagen is number four. I'm going to keep talking now. Yeah. Do you have anything to add? <laughs> I just love it because they have a whole dollhouse exhibit there that I love to go to. And, and I think if you're a huge history buff, it's, it's the perfect place to go for yeah. sure. So number three, I'm gonna keep on this track, and it's the Muskol in uh, Aarhus. So we went to, we've been to Aarhus a ton of times, but we went there a couple Christmases ago and actually went to this museum. I didn't know very much about it ahead of time. I think yeah. people on the channel maybe recommended it to us. And I just, uh, I, it's basically the, all about human history of, of being human and, and, you know, kind of like, you know, as humans evolve, they've got, Bogman, super old. They've got some other, you know, bodies that were recovered that are also really old, not as old as the Bogman. And there's just all these great exhibits and just like everything, it's just such a well-organized museum and it's gorgeous outside, um, like built into this uh, like green space. It was a completely miserable day when we were there so we didn't go outside <laughs> at all. Um, but we had a great time and I wanna go back because there's like every museum in Denmark it seems, it's impossible to like experience the entire thing in a single visit because there's so much information yeah. there yeah i mean i i think you could honestly spend a couple days there just going through all of the exhibits and they do a really good job a lot like the jose anderson who's they do a really good job of making them very immersive and very um there's things that you can do you can interact with some of them I remember for the bog man thing, they had this whole area where you, when you walked on it, it was kind of spongy like a bog. So I thought that, that was really, really cool. I love that museum. Yeah. And so what we're going to do now real fast before we get to our last two museums mm -hmm. is we're going to take a quick break and show you one of the most important parts of a yes. museum visit, <laughs> which is to stop and have lunch at a cafe. And we were recently at the Aros in Aarhus and we had Vilas with us. Yep. Maya was with us, of course, because Vilas wouldn't be there if Maya wasn't there, <laughs> probably. And then our friend Peter from Scannable yes. Brew House was there. So let's take a quick peek at our lunch at the Aros uh, Cafe. All right, so we have assembled a crew of Vilas, <laughs> Maya, Miranda, and Peter has shown up here. Our friend Peter, who's known as the arm tattoo guy, I think, by a lot of people <laughs> in exactly. videos recently. The painted arm. Yeah, exactly. We have just had a visit to the Aros and we're in the Orangerie yeah. Cafe. Oh, yeah. As we're going to eat. And Peter and I got this um, pork. Braised pork. Braised pork jaw. Miranda got herself. I have a selection of Danish cheeses, my favorite being the Gamal Knas by Arla. Actually, these are all Arla cheeses, and Josh is not getting any of these, no matter what he I'm says. I'm more interested in the these pork. These are mine. No, these are mine. <laughs> Both mine. Maya and Vilas. Got some... some Salmon on yeah. some rye bread. Salmon, rye bread, yeah. smobberol, yeah. something or other. All right, as every, every trip to a museum should include, a visit to the cafe, especially in Denmark, because the cafes at the museums in Denmark are tops. They are actually pretty good, yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and eat, but I can, I've actually had this before, <laughs> because I've been here before, and it's worth it. Mine. I didn't record us talking about how much we enjoyed the meal, so I'm just going to no. tell you. I mean, the, 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 the whole pork knuckle or whatever. Pork, you have pork cheeks. Pork cheeks, yeah, yes. the pork cheeks that... Peter and I have had which is amazing. It was so, I mean, it was so filling. It was so good. And I actually, we had grand plans to have a big dinner that night. <laughs> no. And I was so full from that um, that I, we just like had leftover stuff no. in the in the Airbnb. And I successfully guarded my cheese plate. Nobody got yeah, any. Yeah, I didn't it. get any. I was kind no. of annoyed because Kira and I went there, and the uh, when uh, Kira and I and Annabelle went back last summer when they were here, and we shared the cheese plate I don't and care. the port. Actually, she is an important fan, so I had all the port. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
All right, so you're going to talk about this one, but I just will say that in this case, we're including a castle because in Denmark, so many like just castles and things like that are basically Reused, like museums yeah. also. And I mean, we cannot not include our favorite. Frederiksborg's thoughts. So that's our number two. I would put it at number one, but we can we can agree to disagree. <laughs> I love Frederiksborg Slot. It has, um, it just in addition to all of the amazing furniture that they have there, I mean, the castle, it's, uh, the palace itself is amazing and beautiful. It has a gorgeous chapel. Um, but there's all this old furniture that is just beautiful to look at. So if you're kind of a furniture nut like I am, it's great to go. They also have, um, it's considered the portrait gallery of Denmark because they do have just endless amounts of portraits from throughout time and it's just an amazing place to go to every place you look there's something to see there's something to learn um i'm one of those people that absolutely like reads every little placard to learn about what things are and i think it's really really interesting they've got a super old bible there that i think is fascinating well so. it's uh is it not like the first i think it's like the first, first translation in danish. and of danish yeah so it's it's super interesting and i i absolutely love going and every time somebody comes to visit us i take them there just as a side note, I'm pretty sure when I was walking around the Vatican in Rome that I saw a Danish Bible. They had one section oh. that had uh, Bibles that were translated oh, in a bunch cool. of different languages. And I'm pretty sure one of the ones I oh, saw was the Danish one. Um, it was like 30 or 40 different ones yeah. in this glass case. Oh, but, that's really cool. Um, anyway, yeah, Frederick Porch Slot, such a cool place. Just an hour yeah. north of Copenhagen. And yeah. yeah there's all do. the gardens too, but the inside is just, I could go on the inside for days. All right, the number one is a little controversial because um, you might consider it controversial because we've gone through all of these and I've yet to say the Louisiana Art Museum. And guess what? I'm not going to say that because that's not one of my favorite museums no. in Denmark. <laughs> and Miranda, as mentioned, would prefer Frederick's Sports yeah. Slot, but I love the Aros. I have been there like five or six times now, I think. And I mean, you love to go. I don't know if I've been, I've been to Aarhus a couple times for work, in which case I didn't go into any museums, yeah. but I think every time I've gone, maybe except once for fun, I've gone in the Aros because there's always a really cool exhibit mm, yeah. down in the basement and it's constantly rotating. I've never, I go infrequently enough that it's always different yeah. when I'm there, <clears throat> but also even the main stuff changes. Like the very first time I went with, maybe it was the second time I went, but one time I was there with Maya and my favorite painting of the flag falling from the sky was there, but that's no longer there because it's at the Stottens Museum right now. So, I mean, it's even the main stuff changes a little bit. It's just, but it's such an amazing building. The, the rainbow at the top, even though I'm terrified of heights and don't make it more than like five feet out, it's still so cool to see and take pictures and see the whole city on the roof. And I mean, it's just, I... The design of the building, everything about it, just even though I'm not a huge art museum person, it is just one of my favorite places to go. And it just make to me, it just makes Aarhus just even better mm. as a city to visit. And the yeah. museum is just such, and the cafe, as we saw, yeah. super good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I do like, it's not that I don't like it. I do like it. Um, it's more that, like, I love history and stuff, so Frederick Schwarzlock's always going to have a special place for me. But I do love to go to Aros because he's right. They do have, always have really unique installations. Um, there was one particular one that we saw um, with a, a neon sign that, I can't remember your sense of my sense of language is I think what it was and it was just really interesting and thoughtful it made you think about things and I really like that about ours that you go and you always see an exhibit that really gets you thinking well, there's some modern stuff but then there's even more if you like history I mean yeah there I got beautiful portraits I have to there tell you this time. this is a quick little fact yeah uh, I had this one, I don't know if you'll see this, I don't know if he watches yeah. all these, this one history teacher for three of my four years of high school. And one of the cool, unique things he did is he would leverage art as a yeah. way to talk through history because, I mean, art is typically a representation of a battle at a battlefield or something that culturally is going on in that specific time. So we'd always look at art, we'd always look at like uh, statues and, mm -hmm. and around DC where I grew up, there's tons of statues everywhere. And so art is history. It's a representation back before they had YouTube videos yeah. to talk about what was going on. 
art was it. So if you want to learn about history, you can absolutely get that going through an art museum. And the top floors of the ROs have more kind of traditional yeah. uh, paintings really and stuff artwork, that is yeah. more like could basically be a little bit of history. Yeah. Um, and I'm now I'm going to one quick other tangent because... <laughs> He made us. He made us watch the uh, agony and the ecstasy. Oh, I love that movie. Charlton Heston, all about the paint, all about the painting of the Sistine Chapel, which is one of the reasons yeah. I went to Rome recently. Now that was my second time to see it, and the second time in Rome. But that experience in high school, mm. like getting so immersed in the story of the painting of yeah. that uh, of the Sistine Chapel ceiling made the experience of seeing it in person so much more amazing. So mm. I do appreciate this connection of art and history. And one reason why I'm not as big of a fan of the Louisiana Art Museum because that art is less about yeah. history and it's all so modern. And I really like more traditional art museums mm. like the museum, uh, the Stottons too. Museum, which has a lot more kind of traditional art that has a lot of history. And why I love the yeah. falling from the sky painting yeah, so much because yeah. it's all about the history and the origins of the Danish flag and and the history of Estonia. Yeah. So I think we're both that way that we really love going to those and seeing those kind of more historical. It's just like a it's like a point in time, you know. It's but so it's, interesting. Well, it's, it is a point in time in a yeah, frame. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. It's a, with no motion or anything. That yeah, it, yeah it's uh, super neat. So uh, that's our number one is Aro. So. Things we did not put on the list, uh, museums that we know are good. Of course, Louisiana, which yeah. I appreciate. The I don't know if you've even been there. The one not time I went, we had no. friends visiting. I mean, the location on the water is super cool, but the art just does not really speak to me there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's Sorry. not one of the, yeah. <laughs> um, also, the Glyptotech is a great museum. Oh, it's gorgeous. We're going to do a video from there pretty soon because this year is the 125th anniversary of the Glyptotech. Exciting. And they're having some special celebration so we're going to yeah. go visit around then so expect a glyptotech uh, video soon we yeah. we went there on our very first trip we did. to uh, copenhagen 10 years ago now we did and uh sunabor slot great oh i love that there. one yeah colding i think also had some, some yeah. really good historical stuff other good but if there's every place your favorite museums in Cope in, in Denmark, Copenhagen. Yeah, I could be in Copenhagen. <laughs> tell us your favorite museums in Denmark, and tell us your favorite museums outside of Denmark. Oh, we'd love to. I mean, hear that. what where yeah. where should we go if we're visiting another place in Europe? What museum yeah. should we visit if we're traveling somewhere else? But certainly in Denmark, let us know your favorite museums and why. Mm. Why maybe you don't agree with our list? Or <laughs> you do I don't know, but. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, let's, I mean, I think I'm going to just link to, um, not our, I don't have like an RO specific video. No. Maybe let's link to our Fredericksburg yeah. slot video, which is like one of the first ones we oh, ever gosh. made. So you can see old <laughs> versions of us talking about it, but link yeah. to Fredericksburg slot below if you haven't seen it. But otherwise, thank you so much. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.